Puppy Chow, aka Muddy Buddies, is like the ultimate Midwest America snack dessert. And if you've never had it before, I'm sorry. This is like super nostalgic of my childhood and childhood birthday parties. It's amazing. So let's make macaron versions. So I'm starting off with a French method macaron shell. I wanted a pretty like deep, um, brown color. So I'm going to use both brown and black shell food coloring. I have some Chex mix that I'm going to pulverize and smash with my fingers. You could do this in a plastic bag. You can do this in a food processor if you want it super fine and powdery. I like having the texture. That is up to you. Anyway, back to the mixer. I've got my room temperature egg whites in there. As soon as it's looking white and frothy, I'm going to start streaming in my sugar mixed with a tiny bit of cream of tartar. That's just going to help the meringue get really nice and help with its structure. And as soon as I get all of the sugar streamed in here, and I'm going on kind of a medium low speed here. You don't want to go too fast. Also don't want to go too slow. Um, as soon as I get all of that incorporated, when I'm getting to about a soft peak or maybe a medium soft peak, it's about 70% of the way done, is when I really like to add in my food coloring. So I'm going to add in some brown gel food coloring and a tiny bit of black gel food coloring um, because if you don't know about Muddy Buddies or um, Puppy Chow, it is Chex Mix covered in peanut butter and ch dark chocolate and then tossed with powdered sugar <laughs> it's amazing it's phenomenal actually highly addictive and so i wanted a really deep brown because i wanted to truly be like a chocolate peanut butter kind of color um so that's what i'm going for here i've got my dry ingredients the almond flour and powdered sugar and i'm just going to add that in in about three ish additions i really like to add in my dry ingredients that way um just to make sure that i am not over mixing um or mixing for too too long and I think that that the three additions really helps me control the speed and to make sure I don't have any pockets of dry ingredients or anything like that some people really like to do this in their mixer um if you are comfortable with that go for it um if you do it in the mixer i might recommend um still not adding in everything at once or i would also recommend switching over to your paddle attachment instead of the whisk attachment um but yeah, it it's, can be a little scary and takes a little playing around with. Personally, with a small batch, I just like to do it by hand. I like the way it feels. I can tell immediately with my spatula when things are ready, when things are mixed in. As soon as I have everything together, I'm going to be folding it more purposefully and kind of scraping around the sides of my bowls, folding it onto itself, looking for the ribbon stage when the batter will flow off like like a ribbon from my spatula. So as soon as I get this done, um, I want to talk about how this is going to become like puppy chow. So puppy chow, which got its name because it looks like dog food, <laughs> it is not a particularly attractive dessert, especially if you don't know what it is. But um, because it is Czech cereal covered with chocolate and peanut butter and then covered after that in powdered sugar um it has this really like rough bumpy powdery color to it with definite like dark undertones so as soon as i get my macaron batter to the right consistency i'm going to transfer it to my piping bag with my piping tip i usually use anywhere from an 803 to an 806 um but again, whatever works for you, works for you. And I'm going to pipe regular old circles. And as soon as I tap my trays, I'll sprinkle on the Chex cereal. And as those are drying, then I'm gonna get into my puppy chow ganache.
as I mentioned, I'm just going to be piping regular old circles. And the reason I went for this really dark brown color is that I want this dark color to shine through. Um, even after I add on the Chex Mix and it, you know, kind of looks puppy chowish. But after these bake and cool, I'm actually going to dust on powdered sugar and if you are not from midwest america this might sound like a sugar bomb and it kind of is but it's meant to be it's supposed to be so bear with me here um because i'm going to be dusting on powdered sugar you will be able to see the darker color underneath it it's not like i'm dipping this in chocolate or something like that um and so because of that i really want to make sure that it's dark enough whereas if i just left this a white shell or even a light tan shell i think with the addition of the powdered sugar it would look a little bit washed out um, or it would look more like a powdered sugar donut or something like that if it were a lighter color so i really want to make sure that i have a really dark color here um, for the base of my macarons to stay true to that regular original puppy chow kind of vibe i'm just gonna tap my tray a little bit here to smooth out the shells release any air pockets and then i am going to sprinkle on the chopped up chex mix that i have um, if you don't have access to chex cereal for whatever reason um, you can just use any kind of like crispy rice cereal is what it basically is um and i personally like having some larger pieces and some like really powdery small pieces but again it's up to you if packaging is a concern i might recommend having everything pretty pulverized otherwise this will poke out they end up being a little bit larger a little bit fatter because of all of the cereal bits poking out here and there um, so just take that into consideration if you do give these a try I like to rest my macarons on my counter uh, for anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes until I can touch them. My finger comes away without pulling any of the batter away. Um, it has formed a nice skin and then into the oven. Those go usually for about 16 to 18 minutes, one tray at a time in my home kitchen. Um, this might be a little bit different for you depending on where you live, what your kitchen is like, what your oven is like, all of those factors so definitely do what's right for you in your kitchen while those cool i am going to work on the puppy chow ganache as i mentioned even if you're not familiar with puppy chow a main feature of that is having your chocolate coating that's mixed with peanut butter so i'm starting off with a pretty standard chocolate ganache i have 50 50 um, dark chocolate and milk chocolate here and then i also have a little bit of salt that i'll be adding in and a little bit of honey or you could use trimaline if you have that i also have butter and peanut 
peanut butter, but I will be adding that after um, everything else is emulsified and combined. So once I get this into my bowl, I'm going to heat my cream up. If you're making a small batch, just use your microwave. Otherwise, you might want to put this onto your stove, get it to a scald, and then pour it over all of the chocolate, honey, and salt. After that is all mixed together and combined is when I'm going to add in the butter and the peanut butter. Um, I like to start off by using a whisk just to make sure that I don't have any clumps. And then I absolutely recommend using an immersion blender if you don't have one of these. 100% um, recommend you get one, invest in one for your kitchen. Um, there are some that are very expensive, it's true, but there are also some pretty affordable versions. Um, it definitely depends on how many speeds there are. <laughs> so absolutely recommend getting that for the smoothest, silkiest ganaches in your kitchen. After that, I'm just transferring it to a sheet pan so that can cool. And while that is cooling, I'm going to work on the powdered sugar coating for my macarons. I have powdered sugar here in a bowl. I have a nice fluffy pastry brush um, and my cooled and matched macaron shells. I'm just going to one at a time use that pastry brush to brush and dust on powdered sugar over every bit of those shells. I don't want it to be like super thick or clumpy. I do want it to be everywhere, but I don't want it to like be falling off and like <laughs> just completely, I don't know. The powdered sugar can easily clump up in those bits of Chex Mix that are on there. So I really think that using a pastry brush is better both for the clumps of powdered sugar sake and also if you just toss your macaron shells in there, you really run the risk of breaking your shells <laughs> or cracking something. So I think even though it takes a bit of time, I definitely think it is worth it. And as you can see here, it's already lightened in color you obviously still see the really dark shell um, but it has a totally different vibe now from just a minute ago when the shells didn't have that powdered sugar and honestly it is looking so much more like puppy chow right now it looks amazing now that my ganache has cooled completely to room temperature, I am just going to pipe that in. Um, because of the addition of peanut butter, this is a relatively thick ganache. So I would say before using this, I do not recommend putting it into your refrigerator unless it is a very brief, if it is an emergency and you need to use it right away um, because it is quite thick um, and will pipe on really nice and thick and glossy like as soon as it hits room temperature is amazing. I really hope you give this a try. Also, if you've never tried the original version of Puppy Chow or Muddy Buddies, as some people call them, um, you should also definitely try that, but make a small batch because it is addictive and not healthy at all. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming along on this macaron adventure with me. If you give this a try, definitely tag me on Instagram so I can see your end result. You can find me at Maddie Brame. All right, until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye!